It's the coveted quarterback of the week award that Matt Ryan comes on and gives every single Monday. A lot of competition for this week's award, but who are you going to give it to, Matt? Well, we're setting setting like a, a prerequisite that you're an automatic winner if you take over 10 seconds, scramble, and throw a walk-off Hail Mary. So my guy Jaden Daniels gets the, uh, the coveted award this week. I mean, unbelievable play at the end. Maybe not the most complete game for him of the season from, from the start to the end, uh, but he's creating something there in Washington, right? A, a level of belief, um, making the guys around him better. Uh, it's It's been impressive to watch, fighting through kind of that rib uh, cartilage issue yesterday. You could tell at times he was, he was uncomfortable, uh, but, you know, stepping up, making plays, and then, you know, giving his team a chance at the end and then unloading a beautiful 65-yard bomb that gets caught for the Hail Mary. Uh, he gets he gets my award this week. He's been fun to watch all year. He's having a great season uh, and deserves it. Yeah, and I saw that, you know, immediately you could see that their coaching staff is confident with this guy because he's got a whole shot on the left side of the field. Tyreek Stevenson gets cooked uh, early on in the game, a little Burt Toast action, and then obviously the end, Tyreek Stevenson again. But it was throughout the course of the game when this team needed him to make plays with his legs. I think that's really the story of the game, his ability to convert, move the chains, barely get that first down, that vintage Lamar Jackson leaning his body, keeping the ball in bounds, finding a way to get cross the first down marker. That's what I saw from Jaden yesterday. So scary, and obviously a great defense to Chicago Bears, but the amount of times that this Washington Commanders offense was able to get down the field, it's a testament to how well this guy Jaden Daniels has played. And I'll say this, we've kind of discussed, or everyone's discussed every single part of this Hail Mary so far, whether it's Tyreek Stevenson celebrating before the while the play is literally going on, whether it's the fact that they gave him 13 free yards on the play prior. But no one's given a lot of love to that throw. 65 yards is no easy feat, and I think a lot of times in those situations, quarterbacks try to overdo it. You'll see wobbly balls. You'll see guys not get it there. For him to get 65 yards right on the goal line was, to me, like that's worthy in and of itself of some praise because – as you know, Matt, like it's not easy. Yeah, what are you to trying to accomplish like that? on that Hail Mary? I mean, we know that it's like we got to score a touchdown, but what is going through your mind as a quarterback when you hear Hail Mary? I think accuracy like is underrated on on Hail Marys. And I mean, the best I've ever seen do it is Aaron Rodgers, right? Like he puts that thing up and it comes down the chimney right on that like little three foot circle. Uh, that that you want to land it on, right? And you want to kind of hit it right in the center of where the guys are going up to get it. Usually your best chance is the jumper going up and high pointing that thing and bringing it down. Usually when it's tipped, it's it's not great. But um, I agree, Mike, the, the, the accuracy on that throw, the ability to extend the play. I'm kind of a fan because I hated it as, as a player of pressuring the Hail Mary, yes. right? Of, of overloading it and just, especially when it's not like a 40 yarder, when it's like that 65 yarder that you've got to hit because you need time to be able to do it. I'm a fan of sending five, right? Of overloading that one side, sending five, uh, and then kind of blitzing a guy off the backside. That was always the biggest pain in the neck, uh, I thought, when, when I was playing. And so uh, I know it's, you know, you, you're trying to play the numbers. Everybody's thoughts on that are different. That's just kind of where I net out on it. But uh, I thought it was a beautiful job, beautiful throw. Yeah, as an O-lineman, you're rushing three. I'm yawning in protection. I'm like yawning. Correct. And we go double teams to the right. They always make the highest paid guy block one-on-one, -on -one, which is a left tackle. Everybody slides right in these things. And last night, you just saw uh, Jaden Daniels had time. He had time to make things happen in the backfield. TJ Edwards was in a spy technique. You could have at least green-dogged him at the snap of the ball. But to your point, you speed up these quarterbacks. You get them off platform. Not only does the accuracy take a hit, but you're off platform, you may not have the same strength. 100%. I mean, he was able to kind of crow hop, set his feet into that and keep that upper body relaxed to kind of let it flick. It was uh, a beautiful, beautiful throw. But I'm with you. I don't understand. Like, I totally don't understand a spy in that situation. If he's going to take off, he's still got 60 yards to go, right? You've got a number of guys down there that are going to come up, rally, tackle, whatever. It turns into, you know, throwing that ball all over the place. I'd send it a minimum four, but I'm 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 a believer in sending five guys in that situation.
And I'll say this, I mean, the great irony of the whole Tyreek Stevenson situation is if he wasn't actually involved, if he was stayed celebrating. He tried to catch it. The Bears would have won the game because he's the one that tipped it up to the wide receiver. So sometimes there's like a too many cooks thing there, especially on those real lofted balls where you almost have too many guys on defense jockeying for, for a position. You really only need one to bat it down. Now, you probably need more than that to get in position, but you really don't need a full gambit of seven guys back there when you rush four. So interesting debate that will happen in Hail Mary's going forward. But I want to hear who an honorable mention from you might be because we saw Jalen Hurts ball out. We saw Kyler Murray ball out. We saw Justin Herbert ball out. We saw Bo Nix ball out. Who would be an honorable mention quarterback of the week for you this week? I think it's Bo Nix. And I know they were playing the Carolina Panthers, but he was efficient. He was accurate down the field. I thought he moved around really well. I think with what Sean Payton uh, is asking him to do, He's doing a really good job. I'm interested. I think this is going to be a good matchup. We've got it this week. Broncos, Ravens, right? Two teams that that are pressuring the quarterback. Ravens giving up a lot of passing yards. I'm curious to see, uh, you know, Bo Nix versus that Ravens defense. But I thought he played really, really well yesterday. And like you said, I think there were a lot of guys that played played well, right? Maybe not like these crazy, you know, high-end performances that we've seen. uh, But there was a lot of good quarterback play around the league yesterday. Yeah, Bo Nix, I think the way he just moves and evades pressure has been the most impressive thing from him as a rookie. Been really up and down as a passer. This one obviously up, but everyone seems to get up against Carolina Panthers. But his ability to evade, not take sacks, been really impressive.